Hello and welcome to this tutorial. In this video we're looking at the installation of Bits Power water blocks on an EVGA X58 classified mainboard. First a few cautionary notes. Power up your mainboard with the original heat sinks on and check if everything works. Make sure that you are statically discharged before handling the mainboard. And remember that removing the original heat sinks voids the mainboard's warranty. Install water blocks at your own risk. Our first step is to remove the original heatsink from the mainboard. At the back of the board you'll find a total of 12 screws that are attaching 3 individual heatsinks covering the chipsets as well as the MOSFETs. Remove all of these screws. Around some of the screw holes there are rubber washers glued onto the PCB. These washers are no longer needed and you can easily peel them off by hand. The MOSFET heatsink can now be lifted off. The main heatsink combination is a bit more difficult to remove. Apply pressure gently and evenly, and once it comes off, give it another slight tug in order to unplug the LED cable. To the left of the north bridge, you'll find the third and final heatsink that can also be lifted off. Next, we'll want to remove the residue of the original thermal grease from the chips. I recommend using Arctic Clean or a similar cleaning agent as it makes the job a lot easier. Components that were covered with thermal pads don't need extra cleaning. Once that's done, we can apply the thermal grease provided with the water blocks to the three chips. BitPower provides Arctic Silver 5, a thermal compound that is, to put it bluntly, way better than the stuff that comes with the mainboard. Use a small spatula or a finger wrapped in plastic foil to spread the thermal grease out evenly over the chip's surfaces. Some components on the mainboard, highlighted in blue here, need to have thermal pads placed on them. All you need for this is the thermal pad provided with a block and a pair of scissors. You can roughly judge by eye to what size the pad needs to be cut down to. The size doesn't need to be a perfect fit for each component, just remember that it's better if the pad is a bit too large than if it's too small. Remove the plastic foils from both sides of the pads before placing them down. According to the instructions, I'm supposed to place two small washers onto each of the screw holes on top of the mainboard. Additionally to that, I need to place a spacer between the screw and the bottom of the mainboard. So I'm supposed to align the screw, the spacer, the screw hole on the mainboard, two small washers balanced on top of each other, as well as the thread on the water block itself. Now I'm not supposed to do this in just one place, but in six places simultaneously. So while I'm attaching the first screw, I have to make sure that five other pairs of tiny washers stay balanced on top of each other. This is complicated. Now if I try to do this in a way that's clearly visible for the camera, and also make sure that my head doesn't get into the picture, that my hands don't block the view and that I don't cast a shadow on everything and so on and so forth, it gets next to impossible. So here's two alternative suggestions about what to do with those washers. Number one, use a spot of glue or even a spot of thermal grease to attach the two washers to each other and onto the mainboard. Number two, just don't use the washers. They aren't absolutely necessary and as long as you're careful while tightening the screws, you don't really need them. I went with the second option. The water block can now be carefully aligned and placed onto the mainboard. Before proceeding to the next step, I recommend prepping the screws by already sliding a spacer down over each one. Then you can hold the block and the mainboard between your hands and turn both around. Now you can attach the screws from the back of the mainboard. You can easily attach the screws by hand and don't need to tighten them down yet. Once all the screws are in place, use the tool provided with the water block to tighten them down gently and evenly. Our next step is to install the MOSFET water block. You'll find a thermal pad already cut down to the right size provided with the water block. Remove the plastic foils and place it over the MOSFETs. You can also reuse one of the thermal pads from the original heatsink here.
The bits power MOSFET block also comes with washers that are to be placed on top of the screw holes. Luckily there's only one of them per screw hole and only a total of four of them, so installing them isn't as much of an ordeal as with the main block's washers. Once the washers are in place, place the water block over the MOSFETs. To make sure the washers don't slide away, I recommend lifting the mainboard up to eye level and attaching the screws from below. In case this doesn't work for you, you can always just install the block without the washers. We follow the same procedure as before. Once the screws are in place, tighten them down with the tool and make sure none of them are too tight. And with that, we're finally done. The EVGA X58 Classified is fully equipped with bits power water blocks and ready to get wet. Mm -hmm.